Hey guys, my name is Nicole. Welcome back to my channel for another DIY upcycling video. Today I'm working through a pile of antique cutting boards and rolling pins that I've just been collecting. And today I'm turning them into some home decor that I can sell in my antique booth, Green Onion Vintage, hopefully for a profit. Let's get started. So first up, I have this really beautiful poster from Cavallini Paper Co. It's the Le Jardin. So the garden poster. I think they actually market these as wrapping paper. I cannot imagine using this paper as wrapping paper though. The quality is really high. It's nice and thick and the images are just beautiful. So again, these are Cavallini posters. Oh, I was really hoping that would focus for you. I'll put a link down below. So you can get them on Amazon. So I'll give you some links. I've done a bunch of different projects with these. But today I have some rolling pins out and I'm going to see how many projects I can make with just this one poster. So let's get started on this. So for my first upcycling project, I'm going to be cutting out a section of this poster and Mod Podging it onto this antique rolling pin. I love this rolling pin. It has some really nice green handles, which is of course my favorite color. And I love that the green's worn off and like this rolling pin has been used a bunch. I'm using the painter's tape to give me an accurate circumference of the rolling pin so that I know how much paper I need to cut out. Um, this method worked really well. Uh, if you have like a sewer's measuring tape, that would work really well to get the circumference as well. I just couldn't find mine anywhere. Um, and then I'm using my big square ruler to just finish off where I need to cut so that I have a perfect size piece of poster to wrap around my rolling pin. Um, this is a little bit more tedious. I don't really enjoy measuring very much, <laughs> but geometry definitely came in handy here. I don't find myself using calculus all that much, but here my geometry public school education is at work. Here we go. So once I get my section cut out, I do wrap it around my rolling pin just to make sure I cut the right size. And luckily it worked out perfectly. I wanted a tiny bit of overlap in the poster at the seam and I achieved that. So all was good there. Uh, typically I'll measure something wrong the first time and have to redo it. So I was pleasantly surprised that I did it right the first time. Now, since this paper is so thick, I do adhere it with some glue, some hot glue first before I do the Mod Podge. Like I said before, the posters are such high quality and they're really, really thick, heavy paper. So I wasn't sure the Mod Podge would hold it on its own. And the hot glue just let me kind of move along the project a little bit faster because I knew this would stick. And then I could just Mod Podge the rest of it on. I didn't want to just hot glue it on the ends and kind of let it be loose around the rolling pin, if you know what I mean. I wanted it to be glued all the way around because later I'm going to be distressing it. And if I didn't have it Mod Podge down firmly, I wouldn't be able to distress it. I don't know if that makes any sense, but that is why I went ahead and Mod Podge instead of just wrapped it with the hot glue because that would have been an option too. So I'm just making sure I have plenty of Mod Podge on the rolling pin. I did kind of wipe the rolling pin off, but honestly I didn't do like a heavy cleaning on it. And the Mod Podge did a really great job of holding it, so that was a bit of a relief there because I didn't do all the prep work that I probably could have. And then I just make sure that I push it down really firmly once the Mod Podge is on. And then I do another little bit of hot glue on that final seam. And I try really hard to smooth that hot glue down so that there's not like a big bump in the seam at the end. Now you definitely could have stopped there, but I want to make this look truly vintage and antique. So now I'm going to be distressing the edges of the poster. Since it's so thick, I was having a hard time sanding it right away, so I took some scissors to it. I started just kind of tearing at the edges. Um, it ends up looking really nice, but you got to trust the process here for sure. So once I've kind of frayed the edges, I do go all the way around it with just a sanding block. And you can see there, it's kind of sanding the rolling pin and the paper. I really like the effect it gives. It takes a little bit of the um, the color saturation off on the poster and then gives you a really nice distressed edge like it's been there forever. I was so happy with that with how that turned out. I've never done this before so that was truly an experiment. And then just to add some aging to this, I'm using the Dixie Bell water-based gel stain in the color Tobacco Road just to add a little bit of brown aged color to this. And I thought just all of it together it looked so beautiful at the end. I do end up making a second one of these, which I'm gonna show you really quickly right here with red handles. It's a little bit smaller. 
Um, as far as the direction of the poster, you can see this one's more horizontal. The next one I do it vertical, and I think that's actually my preference. And I'm keeping this little one for a while because I love how it turned out so much. Now I'm going to be applying the poster to this mini little cutting board. Um, this is just one I think I picked up at a yard sale or maybe my mom picked it up for me. And this was definitely like uh, a project where I didn't know how it was going to end up as I started. I just kind of went for it. And so first I started just by cutting a piece of the poster and Mod Podging it right on there, just like I did with the rolling pin. And I thought that looked really plain. So then I went ahead and distressed the poster which I liked how that looked, but it just still wasn't very much going on. It didn't look very finished. So I added the same Voodoo gel stain from Dixie Bell in Tobacco Road just to kind of age the poster. I really, really love the combination of the poster with this gel stain. I think that was like the perfect addition to make it look nice and antique-y. Um, but after this, I still wasn't satisfied. I went back over the edges with like the black Dixie Bell paint and it's called Caviar. And then I tied some twine around the top. So eventually I liked how it ended up, but it was definitely a process of trying different things. Um, and I think that you guys are going to like this one too. But, you know, trust the process and just experiment with different uh, painting techniques and you'll probably figure out something that you like. Moving right along to a rolling pin project, I'm using the Iron Orchid Design stamp. Uh, this one's called Kindest Regards. I've never used this one before and I'm really excited to use it. It's very scripty. I love the Iron Orchid Design stamps because they're so delicate. The details are really, really fine, and they're so pretty on anything that I use them on. I have this big antique rolling pin. It's kind of whitewashed. You can't really tell on the screen as well. But I'm using that same circumference trick with the tape so that I know where to start and stop my stamp because I don't want my stamp to overlap at the end. So once I kind of have it marked off, then I just put my ink all over the stamp, kind of just in that one section where the blue tape overlaps. And then I just roll my rolling pin right up the stamp, making sure that I'm applying a lot of pressure because I want to make sure that I get all those details in there. And I love just how that black script looked, looks on that white wood. And look how fine the details are, it's so pretty. Now to finish this off, I'm gonna paint the handles black. This is the Dixie Belle Caviar color again. Such a good black paint. And I only did one coat on here because it covers so well. And I just thought having the black handles kind of tied everything together. And once I have the handles all dry, I go back over them and I wet distress the handles with a baby wipe. I thought that gave a really nice effect because it made the handles look more antique like they actually have been used before. And using the wet wipe prevents a lot of like just dust and, and mess. Gives you a nice transparent look to the black, which I thought was perfect for this. Up next, I am upcycling these little cutting boards. I got these from Aldi actually. Um, a few months ago, they came in a pack of three. They weren't this pack of three though. It was like rectangle and two squares, I think. And then there was a circular pack with ovals. Anyway, I think it was three pack for like $5 and I've just kind of had them sitting. So I decided to, to do a set of three like hanging cutting boards. So I'm painting them using the Dixie Belle drop cloth just in that center section. And then I'm gonna use the sprig stamp from Iron Orchid Design to just make these little pretty botanical looking um, hanging cutting boards that you could just hang in your kitchen. I'm selling the set of three, I believe for $18 in my antique booth. So I'm gonna distress them and then use the stamp. And this was just such an easy way to upcycle these and turn them into decor. Of course, if you didn't want to paint them, you could actually use them as cutting boards. <laughs> so there's also that. Um, not to make a dig at my husband, but he does often wonder why I take things that are functional and make them non-functional. But it's all in the name of decor. Um, and I just think he'll never understand, you know? <laughs> oh my goodness. So I'm taping the bottoms here that I don't stamp onto the frame of the wood. I just want to stamp onto the white. So I'm using the tape to kind of protect that wood frame part. And then I just choose which sprig I want to use. 
again, these are just so detailed and pretty. Um, and there's just a, an assortment of sprigs here to choose from. So I am using just that same black ink. And this would have been easier had I used like a backer to adhere the stamp to first, um, but it worked out okay. And as you can see, I'm definitely taking the time to push down every little detail of the stamp so that it comes out nice and crisp. And I just do that same process for all three of them, add a little jute hanging tie through the hole and these are all done and they're so cute in the end. On to the next little cutting board. This is just another one that I grabbed at a yard sale. Um, this one I would say didn't turn out to be my favorite one, but I do think there's potential in the design. So I went ahead and shared it with you, even though I might tweak it a little bit. Um, so I'm just starting off by taping it and painting it so that I have just like a band of paint um, across the cutting board. And then now, now that the paint is dry, that is important to note, I have the ink on the same scripty um, kind regard stamp from Iron Orchid Designs. I'm gonna just stamp right onto the white paint. And then I remove my tape and then realize that I got text up above where I shouldn't have. So I try to sand that back a little bit. Now that does end up getting mostly covered, so it's not a big deal. Um, after that, I'm just attaching some greenery with a staple gun. And then I finish it off with uh, just some twine that I wrap around the top. So another just really cute little easy one. Um, I do leave a loop of the twine so that it can hang on a wall or on a hook or something and I mean this one literally took me just a few minutes to finish even with the drying time of the paint so I thought that one turned out really cute you'll see that a little bit more at the end of the video and then I have just another random cutting board I have so many this is not even all of them I'll have to make another video when I get some other ideas so I'm doing a grain sack stripe on this cutting board you can see I've already done that another stripe of the drop cloth that goes horizontally and now I'm taping off some vertical grain sack stripes. So I'm just using the blue painter's tape for this. I start with just a thicker line in the center. I'm once again using the caviar Dixie Belle paint, which is a really nice flat black. And then I like to remove my tape when my paint is still wet. I find that gives me the best lines. And then once that black has fully dried, I use a two inch painter's tape. I go right over the center of that line I just painted. And that's going to give me some good spacing to do my other grain sack stripes. So I just leave a really thin line there on the outside. So in hindsight, I probably shouldn't have done black. I probably should have done a dark gray or a green or even a red grain sack stripe because I'm gonna go over this with a crockery stamp from Iron Orca Designs and I'm gonna be using the black ink. I kind of like the monochromatic color scheme that this ends up being, but I know some of you are not gonna like that the stamp doesn't really pop well on the black background. So I understand and maybe next time I'll just use a different color. Um, everything is a learning curve for me, so um, I still like how this one turned out and I'm probably going to sell it as is because I think it looks great. but the black on black might be a problem. Totally understand. So once I select which crockery stamp I want to use, as you can see, there were so many beautiful options. I put it on this lined uh, like transfer sheet. I'm blanking on what it's called, but I've got this sheet of designs. It just helps me keep my designs nice and straight. So I just line it up and just like all the other stamps, just press really firmly to get all those little details nice and firmly attached to your board. These crockery stamps are so popular from Iron Rock Designs and there's a reason. They're just so pretty. And look how that turned out. And once that ink's set a little bit, I go over it with that same 
um, gel stain that I've been using in all of these projects. <laughs> I don't think I've ever used it so much as I have in this project day of crafting. This took me about two days to film all this. But it's water-based, so it's easy to use, and it gives a perfect aged effect. Thank you so much for watching today. Let me know down in the comments below which project was your favorite. I know I have some kinks to work out in some of these, but I thought overall they turned out really nicely. I hope you enjoyed them as well. Make sure you like and subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.